All right, uh, thank you for joining me this morning. Um, as you all know, uh, yesterday was uh, a tragic day. Um, yesterday about 3.25, uh, we started getting calls of a uh, vehicle versus a pedestrian. Our units arrived and found a victim, which was a 12-year-old uh, girl. Uh, her name is Lana Carlos, and she's out of Castro Valley. She was a middle school student at Creekside uh, Middle School. Uh, from that event, what we know is a it happened at Manter Road, M-A-N-T-E-R Road, and Crow Canyon Road here in Castro Valley. Uh, the suspect vehicle was a black lifted Ford F-150. That F-150 uh, was being driven by uh, Joshua Byrne. Uh, he is a resident out of Hayward, a prior resident of Castro Valley. Uh, Byrne was driving his Ford uh, west on Manter Road and making a left turn onto Crow Canyon, which would be southbound. Uh, at that time, there were two uh, little girls in the crosswalk who had the green cro uh, cross signal. Uh, they were crossing the street and about midway through, for unknown reasons, Joshua turned left and collided into Lana. Uh, Lana uh, was dragged for several feet and suffered fatal injuries. Uh, Joshua uh, then fled the scene, uh, was last seen heading uh, towards 580 on Crow Canyon. Uh, we had uh, teams working tirelessly through the night to uh, track down Joshua and uh, Joshua turned himself this, uh, this morning, in this morning, uh, just shortly after 8 a.m. here at our office. He was with counsel. Uh, we have taken him uh, under arrest, so he is currently under arrest, and he is being charged with felony hit and run and vehicular manslaughter at this time, or more, maybe more charges uh, to, to come. He say why he didn't stop? He did not. How instrumental was the security, neighbor security camera video? The security uh, camera footage was insurmountable. It, it provided us a uh, just a, a substantial wealth of uh, information and evidence that helped us uh, with this investigation. Was it a matter of time that you were closing in? Because you could see those license plate number on that camera. So was it a matter of time whether he would turn himself in or you were just going to knock out his door and make the arrest? Yes. I, there was a lot of questions out there, a lot of speculation on social media. Um, you know, why we couldn't do this or that. Uh, the point is, when law enforcement's working a, a pretty a sensitive case like this, uh, we have our information, we're working on it. We, we don't want to put anything out that's going to jeopardize the suspect knowing that we're onto him and allow him to run or hide. Uh, we did have units, we did know where he was at, uh, and it was just a matter of time. Did he uh, call you in advance and say, hey, I'm coming in, or did he just show up at the front door? He just showed up this morning. With his lawyer? With his lawyer. And this characterizes level of cooperation. He's uh, very calm right now. And this is live on our streaming service, Cronon. Did he give a reason why he left the scene? He gave no explanation, no reason, nothing. Is he showing remorse? Okay. Not at this point. What was he doing in the Gabe Walters with the CHP we, giving a news he, conference. Obviously, and right before the news conference, we can speculate why he, he turned himself in. Obviously, he knew he did something uh, bad, but right now. In he fact, found it show you in his heart to turn himself in. Picture, his back Again, it was just a matter of time before he walks out, which we will get video of him as he has been placed under arrest. He came in here at around 815. Absolutely. Um, I think also because the amount of uh, response we got from the community, the, the amount of information that we already had initially, uh, played a big role. Will it, will it hurt him that he has stayed the same? Will there be more charges? Let me show you a picture. The charges right now are felony hit and run. So that's that's the main charge. So that is a felony, and obviously the hit and run is because he left. And we did see that the Joshua, after striking Lana, stopped work. Legally and able to cross and left that her in the intersection at Crow Canyon when all of a sudden the car made the a family is grief. Left, I should say, made, made a left you know turn, the family. slammed Iris. into the 12 yes. year old girl. In fact, I talked talk to about. the person Creekside uh, middle school students. Um, no what was he doing in that neighborhood? It was a major impact. He obviously doesn't live there. Right, so he's not a resident up there. Uh, we think he was doing some sort of uh, construction work. This is very personal for you. So many people after it happened in the overnight hours, they were so outraged. Right, so it hits home a little harder just because we're in a small community. Um, my daughter goes to school with them, uh, members of our church showed up right before school because we do know that 12 year old, really and her name Not is deserving Lana Carlos, 
as a dad yeah, yourself, given to us by this must be really scary. She was just walking to the she was she obeying the rules. She was. She made all the right decisions. And uh, when she was hit and killed, it only takes one person to make the wrong decision to ruin everybody's life. So, and it, it, it does hit harm. You know, it hit home. Crooking and road is technically a highway. Um, what kind of efforts will there be to add crossing guards to make it safer? A lot of neighbors who live around there say people just go way too fast. Yeah, so Crow Canyon is a major thoroughfare, and it's a cut through for people trying to beat the traffic from 580 into you know San Ramon, Dublin, Pleasanton, that region out there. Um, obviously, after this, we're going to be stepping up enforcement. Um, we have been out there. We've been out there a lot. Um, that intersection is controlled. Um, it is a red light. Uh, a, a light controlled intersection. There are crosswalks there. It was, you know, you know, so unfortunately, there are, that area we have three schools nearby. Joshua and so um, they're all within a half a mile. Uh, crossing guards, I don't know. What would it take to make that a school zone? Would that change it? So the school zone has to be directly immediately around the school. Um, but uh, you know, for, for changing in purposes, I'd definitely, uh, you know, start talking to the Alameda County Supervisor's Office, uh, maybe Alameda County Roads. Yeah, I know it's early, but do you think it speed played a role under the influence being too high up in that lifted up truck? So we, uh, we do not know just because of the time lapse if, if uh, substances played a role in this. Um, however, uh, gathering from what we saw, speed wasn't an, uh, an indicator. He was just making what would seem a normal left turn um, from what we saw. He obviously didn't see the girls in the crosswalk, but once he hit them, he knew. Was Eddie been texting and driving? We, we don't know that. And has he admitted to anything? He has admitted not, not at this time. Does he have a license, so insurance, what's his driving record like? So right now, we, we do all of the information. We can release that a little later. Um, as far as his driving record, I'm, I can't release that right now. Did his lawyer do the talking? It was a pretty short interview. Did he stop the interview? Uh, let's just say he wasn't uh, willing to answer any questions. He, he, answer walked any questions? he walked in with his attorney. He did. Wait, he didn't answer any questions? No questions. How does that work? So taking the fifth? Well, when you're under counsel and you're, you're taking your counsel's advice as far as talking to law enforcement, um, that's their right. That's under the Miranda rights. But uh, at this point, we have enough where we don't need his, his statement. But did you have a warrant out for him? So that was all working last night. Because if you turn yourself, uh, is that admitting Which we will have. Uh, one can assume, you know, connect the dots, but uh, I don't want to be speculative uh, in this case. Um, but yeah, we had, and again, I just want to thank our investigative service team, our uh, our lead officer on this for just putting in the legwork and a lot of hours last night. Uh, and again, we were going to get him. It was just a matter of time. And we were just making sure all our ducks were in a row, that we had everything lined up, and that we were going to do this in a safe manner. And we're glad that it turned in, uh, into a safe uh, surrender. And just to be clear, he did not answer any questions, and it was a short interview. Correct. That was, was under arrest. Yes.